Do not miss any of our cool videos. Subscribe to our channel for latest updates. Click on the bell icon now. Hey guys, Jatin here. Today we will make a fire detection and notification alarm. For that, we will use a flame sensor. This sensor can simply detect if there is a fire or not. And based on the X input, we will drive our microcontroller to make calls or text SMS using the SIM 800C modem. Let's jump right into it. Let's take a look at the circuit diagram for the project. I have an Arduino Uno over here. The flame sensor, the SIM 800 module, the red LED, the green LED, the buzzer, and a 9 volt battery for the modem. Let's see how to connect these things. We will start with the LED. I will connect the positive that is anode of my LED to digital pin D9. Similarly, I will do the same thing for my green LED and connect it to pin D8. I will connect the ground of both of these LEDs to the ground of my Arduino. For my buzzer, I will again connect the ground of the buzzer to the ground of my Arduino and the positive of my buzzer to pin D7. Let's come to the flame sensor. For VCC and ground, we will connect it to 5V and ground respectively and the D0 pin is basically the output of the flame sensor. We will connect it to pin D5 on an Arduino. Finally, let's come to the SIM800 model. Here, we will connect the TX of the SIM800 to the RX of our Arduino and the RX of a SIM800 to the TX of our Arduino. It is very important to know that the TX and RX have been interchanged. If you will not do this, then you will not be able to use the modem. As the modem requires a power supply, we can give it using a 9 volt battery or a 12 volt DC jack. For that, you will simply plug it to the power port of the SIM800 or use a battery of 9 volts and connect it to SIM800. Please note that after doing this, you have to connect both the grounds that is the ground of the battery or the DC jack or basically the SIM800 module to the ground of our Arduino. This ensures that all the grounds are on the same level. This will complete the schematic diagram for our project. First we have the Arduino Uno, then the SIM800C modem. Our flame sensor, two LEDs that is green and red, a 5 volt buzzer, a 9 volt battery, a connector for that battery, a breadboard. A few jumper wires and finally the Arduino programming cable. Let's start by connecting the Arduino and the SIM 800C model. We are going to connect the ground and the TXRX of both of this. So, ground will be connected to ground. And the TX and RX pins of both of these will be interchanged. That is, for the TX of Arduino, you will connect it on the RX of the model, and for the RX of the Arduino, you will connect it to the TX of the model. Please make sure that if you will not connect it in this way, it will not work. So now we are done with connecting the model. Up next, we will proceed with the breadboard and connect the LEDs and the buzzer. So, now I am starting with the buzzer.
okay so now i i, I will connect the positive of the leds that is the positive of red led to pin 9 and the positive of green led to pin 8 so red goes to pin 9 Green goes to pin eight. Okay, now I will connect the positive of my buzzer to pin seven. Okay, just tidying up things, and now what I'm going to do is I will connect a ground from the buzzer to the ground line. And finally, I will connect all of these grounds to my Arduino's ground. Okay, so that will do it for this part. Let's start with the coding for our project. First, we are going to define a few pins. First, we'll start with red LED. So you are seeing here a hashtag defined with some name and some number. What this does is whenever there is an instance of red LED in the code, it will change it with this number. So if I'm writing red LED anywhere in the program, so by default, it will be changed to this number. Why have we chosen this number? According to our schematic, these are the pins where a red LED, a green LED and the buzzer will be connected. For our flame sensor, we will connect it to the pin 5. Now, I'm going to declare a variable. It is of a data type boolean. Its name is flame sensor value and it's, to, it's storing a value. Why I have chosen this data type? That is, I could have gone with integer, but it would have wasted a lot, a lot of memory. Since I know that my sensor can only give 0 or 1, I will proceed with a boolean data type as it can only store 0 or 1. I have named my variable as flame sensor value and the value stored in it is high. In Arduino, when we write high, it is equivalent to writing 1 and when we write low, it is equivalent to writing 0. So by default, I am storing a value of high in it. That is because I know if my sensor is triggered, if it senses flame it will give a low output so by default i've selected it as high let's go to the void setup section of our code this section will run only once and it will be used to define all the pins the output states the baud rate and so on so here what i've done is i've used the function called pin mode and for that I passed it to parameter that is buzzer pin which means pin number 7 comma output so we have two options over here we can either write output or input if we want to let's say give a voltage to a particular pin if we want it 0 volt or 5 volt right we will declare it as output pin and if we want to read a particular value from some sensor then we will use it the input since I know that buzzer, my red LED and my green LED are something that I have to turn on and off, so I've used the output. However, as I know, my flame sensor will be giving me some kind of an input, so I'm using input over here. I've set my baud rate to 9600 bits per second, which is a standard and not something to be worried about. Now, we will go to the void loop section of our code. This is the section that will keep on running indefinitely till we turn off the microcontroller. First, what we are going to do is we will call this variable flame sensor value which we have declared earlier and we will go perform digital read on it. So basically, this is my flame pin where my flame sensor is connected and I am going to use 
a digital read function on it. So this will give me an output in the form of 0 or 1 and that value I will store in my flame sensor value. It should be noted that when my sensor will detect some kind of flame, it will give me an output value of 0 and when there is nothing, it will give me an output value of 1. Since I have stored my value in a variable, I can do operations on it. So I am using an if else statement over here for a simple comparison between values. So if my flame sensor value is equal to equal to low, that is fire has been detected, then I will turn on the indicators, that is I will turn on the buzzer pin, I will turn on the red LED pin by using the digital write function which will basically set those pins to 5 volt thus starting the devices and I will turn off the green LED by giving it 0 volts. Next I am going to do what I am going to do over here is sending an SMS using the SIM 800C module. So first for that we need to use AT commands and before that we need to learn how serial printing works. Basically when we are doing serial printing it is a communication that uses UART and when we are connecting the TX and RX of our Arduino to the TX and RX of the modem they both can see what is being shared. So when I am writing serial.println this will print AT plus CMGF equal to 1 which will talk about what it will do but it will print this value over my serial monitor and my modem can see if the, something was published so my modem has access to this. Now let's talk about what this does. This AT command is used to send the type of the SMS. Basically there are two types of messages, uh, message formats that can be stored. The first one is a UDF format and the next one is a text format. For the UDF format you have to select 0 and for the text format we have to go with 1. As I want my message to be a text message, I will select 1. I will give a small delay of 1 second over here. Next, what we are going to do is another AT command that is AT plus CMGS. This basically is kind of uh, telling the modem to make a message. So the CMGS is used to text a particular number. So whatever number that you want to send this message to, you have to fill in in this X section over here. Okay. And then you have to end it appropriately this way. Next, whatever message that you have to send, you will write that using serial.println. And finally, to terminate the message, you will use the serial.println character 26. So this will tell the modem that the message has been terminated. And I will give a small delay of 500 ms over here. Let's move to the section that is responsible for making the call. Again, I will use an AT command called ATD, D, ATD plus. And again, I have to insert the phone number over here, which I want the call should be made to. I will give a delay of 10 seconds over here so that my call can proceed. And finally, to cut the call, I will use the AT command called ATH. This completes a coding. But wait, we have used an if statement. We have declared what to do when the sensor value is known, but what to do when it is not. So for that, we will use an else statement too. So for instance, if my sensor knows that there has been flame, it will do the following things. But when there is no flame, what we are going to do is we are simply going to turn off the buzzer and the red LED and to show that everything is alright, we will keep the green LED turned on. And this will finally conclude our code. So now, let's revise on what we have done. First, we have defined all those pins with their appropriate pin number which is according to the schematic. Then I created a variable that will store the sensor's value. In the setup section, I have declared the, out, the pins as output or input. 
and selected an appropriate baud rate. For. Then I am going to continuously use the digital grid function on my flame pin and store, the, store that value in a flame sensor value. Depending on the value stored, I can either have a low statement or a high statement. When it is low, that is the, the flame sensor has been triggered, I will turn on the indicators, send the SMS and finally make a call. And when everything is alright, I will just make my green LED glow and turn off all the LEDs. That will finally complete the code for this project. Let's have a demonstration of how the setup works. Here, I have a lighter with me that will try to simulate the fire. As you can see, the buzzer went on and now we should immediately get a call. Okay, so we did receive a call. I guess the message takes some time to come. And we should have the message. Yes, we received the SMS too. Yes, we received the SMS. I hope you guys liked this project and had fun making this. The link to the code will be in the description below. If you have any doubts, you can post it in the comments section. And if you genuinely like this video, please leave a like. Till then, see you around.